Welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at another string manipulation problem. This problem is called Centuri Prime. So let's start by taking a look at this problem. Sometimes you'll find that problem descriptions are longer than they should be and include information that we can sort of ignore. So I'm only going to read the parts that I think are important. Of course, you should definitely skim the entire problem just to make sure you don't miss any small details. But in this case, we only need to focus on a couple sentences here. So essentially we're gonna be given a list of kingdoms, countries. And it says here that every kingdom whose name ended in a consonant was ruled by a king. Every kingdom whose name ended in a vowel was ruled by a queen. And all kingdoms whose name ended in, a, in the letter Y were not ruled by anyone. So they want us to write a program that will determine the current rulers of several countries, given their names. So now for the input. The first line of the input gives the number of test cases, T. T lines follow, each one containing the name of one country. Country names will consist of only lowercase English letters, starting with a capital letter. There will be no other characters on any line and no empty lines. And for the output, each test case will be outputting one line formatted as they specified there. It says, be careful with capitalization and the terminating period. Your output must be in exactly this format. This applies to nearly any programming competition problem out there. Uh, computers will be judging your solution, so if your output is not formatted exactly as specified, then the answer will be wrong. So taking a look at the limits of this problem, we can see that we're going to be given between 1 and 300 lines or countries. A small data set, the country names will be between 3 and 20 letters. In a large data set, the country names will have at most 100 letters. And of course, we're given sample input and output, which we can use when we're testing our solution before we submit it to Google Coaching. So now that we have a solid understanding of the problem, let's dive in and begin to code our solution. So I'm going to name the class Centuri Prime. We need a main method. Just put that there. Um, we need some way to get the user's input. So we're going to use a scanner. And we're going to be reading the input in from standard in. So that's what system.in is for. Now, in order to use the scanner object, we need to import java.util. So the first thing that we're giving in our input is the number of test cases. So it's going to be an integer. So next line returns a string. So we're going to need to convert this to an integer. So you can use integer.value of. And for each test case, we're gonna be we're gonna need to read in the country name and then output its ruler. So let's use a for loop for that. And I will begin it at one because they number their cases starting at one. And we go all the way up to including T. So each line of input is simply the country name. So scanner.nextline. What we need to do now is we need to find some way to figure out what the last letter of the country is. So one useful method for that is char at. So character last letter equals country dot char at, and then you give it a position. The position is zero based, so in order to get the last character, we do country dot length minus one. So this gives us, gives us the last letter of the country. So depending on what this letter is, we're going to be doing something different. So we could use some if statements if we want. So if last letter is equal to y, then um, let's put some comments in here for now. 
uh, the ruler is nobody. If last letter is equal to A, or last letter is equal to E, or last letter is equal to I, or last letter is equal to O, or last letter is equal to U, then the ruler is a queen. And if none of those conditions were met, then clearly it's a consonant and the ruler is a king. So now that we have a rough idea of how this is going to be structured, let's fill in these comments now. So if letter is Y, that means the ruler is no one. So we want to output case number I. And then we also need the name of the country. So country is ruled by nobody in this case. Don't forget your period. All right, so that's the case where the ruler is nobody. Just move this comment up here. And the next case is when the ruler is a queen. So it's going to be quite similar to this line of code, so let's just copy that. Fix the indentation. And we'll move the comment up top. So is ruled by a queen. And finally, I'm sure you can guess, same sort of thing down here for the king. But if it's a consonant, then it's going to be ruled by a king. And we'll move the comment up again. All right, so as long as I haven't made a silly mistake, this should compile and it should work as a solution. But I'm going to take a moment to show you another way you could have coded this. Uh, please note that if you were in actual competition, I definitely wouldn't waste time refactoring your code or trying to make it look the most elegant because you aren't judged on how elegant your solution looks, but you are simply judged on how fast you can come to that solution or how fast your algorithm performs. But I do want to take a moment to show you how you could have coded this. So. Instead of using a bunch of if and else statements, we could have used a switch statement. So switch statement works, you give it a variable and it takes that variable and matches it against cases. So for example, we have the case where it equals our y. And in this case, we want to do this. And at the end of each case, you should break it. So that just ends it. Uh, we have another case where it's A. And you can chain different cases together like this. So case A or case E or case I or case O or case U. And in this case, it's a queen. And we want to break that. And finally, our last case. What we could do uh, is we could list out all of the consonants one by one. Clearly, this would be quite annoying. So we can use something called a default case. So basically, if, if the switch statement doesn't match any other case, go here. So in our case, if it's not Y, A, E, I, O, or U, basically if it's a consonant, then we want to go to the default case, which means it's a king. So we can print that out and we break. So that means we can get rid of this code here. Got rid of an extra bracket that I shouldn't have. There we go. Now, 
So we, we've used a switch statement. As you can see though, we still have three print statements in here, which seems a little redundant in my opinion. So we're gonna move this down to the bottom, and just have one print statement. However, in order to do this, we want to introduce a new variable, which we'll call ruler. And if it's case y, then ruler is going to equal nobody. You can delete that. If it's this case, then ruler equals a queen. And this case, ruler is a king. Now, we need to change this instead of having nobody. We want to put the variable in here too. So ruler. All right, there's one more trick I want to show you. As an alternative to having all these string concatenations, we can use something called string.format. What this lets you do is, first of all, you specify a string. So string case, and we're going to want to have a variable here. Come back to that in a second. Just put an underscore. And then we want a colon. Then we have a country name. Put an underscore for now. It is ruled by blank. So an underscore, period. What we can do with string.format is we can inject variables where I put these underscores. So the first one is a number. So for that, it's percent sign %d. And you put that as a parameter into the function. So this is i. Next, what we want here is the country name, which is a string. So that identifier is percent sign %s, s for string country. And finally, right here, we want to have another string, which we will put ruler. I prefer the second option. As you'll find out in later videos, string.format has some pretty useful features that we can take advantage of when formatting strings. So now that we've finished putting together our solution, we can try to compile it. So Java Accenture Prime Java. So it compiled, that's good. Now I already downloaded the data sets and I also downloaded the sample input and sample output. So before we try to submit our solution to Google Code Jam, let's test the sample input to make sure it matches the sample output. So Java Centri Prime and we'll feed it test.in. Okay, now we can compare it against what the expected output was. So I'm echoing this file out to the console and it seems to match, so that's good. Now we can run our program and feed it the actual data sets. Practice one dot end. Okay, so it that put it on the console, but of course if we want to submit Submit it, we need to have it in a file. So we can use redirection to put this in, say, one, a1.out. That's the first file. And we can do the same thing for the other file. Okay, so now that we have both of our files ready, we can head over to Google Code Jam and try submitting our answers. All right, so I've selected both of my files. Now we can try to submit them. The first one was correct. The second one was incorrect. So let's go back to the code and see if we might have done something wrong. So if you take a look at our code, you'll notice that we're only accounting for cases where our letters are lowercase. This wouldn't normally cause a problem because the problem description specified that all letters will be lowercase except for the first letter. But what about if the name of the country only has one letter? then that letter is the last letter, and it's uppercase, which we are not accounting for. So in order to fix this, what we're going to do is we're going to change the country name to all lowercase letters. This is a useful method, a string class. All right, so let's try to recompile our program. 
compiled, good. Now let's regenerate our output files so that we can upload them to Google Code Jam in a moment. So we'll run our program and we'll feed it the first file. And we want to output this in a1.out. Since those files already exist, this is going to be replacing those files. But we have our first one ready. And let's do the second one. All right, so now that we have our files ready, let's go to Google Code Jam and test our solutions. So I selected both of the output files, and now we can test them. So the first one still passes. That's good. And now the second one passes. Awesome. So as you can see, you don't always get the solution correct on the first time. But if you get it wrong and your test cases are passing, try to think of what special cases there might be that is messing up your program. For example, in this case, uh, we weren't considering the possibility of countries only having one letter and therefore being uppercase instead of lowercase. So when you're designing your program, definitely look at the constraints of the problem and try to think of all the different possible special cases that could come up and try to deal with them before you submit your solution. Thanks for joining me today, and I look forward to next time.